of the Holy Ghost upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Talk to the Lord in prayer. I say, Lord, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Want your power in my life. The Spirit of God to work mightily in my life tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Close your eyes as we pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord, because of the great promise you have given us. The promise of abundance and the promise of the power of the Spirit upon our lives. Lord, we are praying tonight. You open the windows of heaven and you shower your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we come tonight for a double portion. Double portion of blessing. Double portion of grace. Double portion of power. Double portion of anointing. Oh Lord, we pray that yoke anoint him. And that the, the anointing that breaks the yoke, you give to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. We pray, no oh Lord, that in every life, in every family, everyone here tonight, you move in such a mighty way, this double portion will be ours in Jesus' name. You break every yoke. Amen. You destroy the works of the devil. Amen. You move every mountain. Amen. You heal every sickness. Amen. And you deliver the oppressed. Amen. And the power to go forth and serve you, you give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying, no Lord, tonight your hand will be upon everyone. Amen. And we will rejoice that you have done something great, marvelous, wonderful in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another amen. amen. A good amen before you sit down. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Tonight as we come together, we're looking at the promise of God. As well as the desire of the children of God. We're looking at Second, second Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 9. In 2 Kings chapter 2, here is the word of the Lord for tonight. Double portion for the sanctified believers. 2 Kings chapter 2. We're reading from verse 9. Here it tells us in verse 9. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That's where we got the topic for tonight. You'll find Elijah. Then you'll find Elisha. You'll find the, ma the master. You'll find the servant. You'll find the mentor. 
And then you'll find the disciple. You'll find the teacher. And then you will find the learner. And here Elisha had been following after Elijah for some time. And this was going to be the last day, the last time. They were going to be together. And Elijah was saying, you need something. You must have sensed your need. That's why you are following all this time. And then he said, ask what I will do for you before I be taken away from you. And you ought to be thinking about this before this convention ends. And before we round up everything, is there a desire, an aspiration, a passion in your heart? And in your life, you're saying, I want something. You know, the people that just come to convention and they do not want anything. Number one, just part of the multitude, the men. Here we come. Maybe you are a part of the church. Maybe you are just an invitee. Maybe you just take the convention like, you know, we used to take convention before we were born again. Because you see, our parents, my own parents took me to church. And then in that church, they'll have a particular gathering, a special time every year. And that special time, they called it by different names in different churches. In some churches, it says the harvest time. They say it's the harvest of the church. And we children were looking forward to that. Other places, it's a convention. Other places, it's a convocation. Other people, it's a conference. And it's just the regular year-to-year -year annual event. And we just wait. And if you ask me what I got from those other places, I didn't get anything because there was no desire. But you see, if you're going to have anything, as you come to this convention, there must be a need in your life you recognize. And there must be a passion in your soul. You are crying out for something. Lord, I need this. And if you're like that tonight, God will satisfy your need. And you see, the other people, I said just a multitude, a mixed multitude. They are going, I'm going. They are there, I'm there. My parents are there, I'm there too. And then uh, the uh, pastor said, we should all come. That this year, everybody should be there. And so I listen to my pastor. That's why I'm here. You see such people, you'll just be part of a multitude. Number two, the members. You see, there are members of the church. They're looking at their lives. And they're looking at the dryness and the weariness in their lives. They're looking at the tiredness. And then uh, uh, they're fagged out. They're fatigued. And they're saying, oh Lord, this convention is coming. I need a refreshing upon my life. I need the power of the Holy Ghost upon my life. I want to go to that convention. And when I come back from that convention, re refreshing, abundance, and the upon of the Spirit of God upon my life. Those are the people, if you are here tonight, I welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, part of the multitude. Number two, the members. Number three, the ministers. The ministers. You know, we who are ministers, when you come to a convention like this, I don't know about you, but I know when I was just a young, a young minister, and my passion was there. I wanted something, and I cannot tell you all the story now, but I was saved, I was sanctified, and the Lord gave a vision in my heart, a burden in my heart. I, when I saw people on the street, I saw they were perishing. And I saw that somebody needed to stand up and speak to them and lead them to the Lord. And the Lord gave me a revelation, a vision. I don't know whether you heard before, but in this revelation, I was wearing my best dress. And I still remember that dress now. We used to call it double two. Because, you know, that, that's the title they put, they put at the back there. It was very special to me. And in that revelation, I saw myself wearing that double two. Double two, double, double, double portion. I said double portion. Yeah. At that time, I didn't make any connection between the double two and the double portion. I just knew I was wearing that double two. And then I saw large crowd in front of me. At that time, I, I didn't have any congregation of even 15. We had not even started deeper life. But the Lord showed me this kind of revelation. And I saw a sea of heads. And I saw myself with the Bible in hand preaching unto them. And it was like harvest time. And then when I woke up, I said, Lord, I know you want to do something with my life that time i was a teacher and then i became a lecturer but that dream never let me and it's more than 40 years now what i'm telling you and that dream and that vision that passion in my soul never left and then eventually the uh, you know the university where i was working sent me to uh, london and they wanted us to do some exchange program they'll be paying me fully in london and pay me also in uh, fully in lagos and fully in london and then we immediately i got to london i said now this is my time because in nigeria i was very very busy 
And uh, so I decided that I'm going to search out anywhere where I can just have the anointing, the double portion upon my life. And then I was checking up and then I found uh, this place and I just went there. And the fellow, you know, he taught me, he led me the scriptures and everything. And by the grace of God, that was October 1974. And before I came back to Nigeria, December 1974, the anointing had come. And when I got back to Nigeria, then that's how, what you see now as a ministry. That's, that's why you are here today. And that's because of that double portion, because of that anointing, because of the Holy Ghost power that came. That's why eventually the, the thing exploded. But then as we went on, I began to say, Lord... That vision I saw, because we started the Bible said what 15. I said it's not the end. We came to 100. I said it's not the end. We came to 200. I said this is not what I saw, because I saw a large crowd. And every time I bring that vision back, I said I'm waiting for that time. And that made me to go back to the Lord, saying, Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for sanctifying me. Thank you for baptizing me in the Holy Ghost. But now I'm waiting for that other thing. And I fasted. I prayed. I did did everything that I felt I ought to do. And by the grace of God, something more than double anointing. Amen. Something more than double portion. Amen. Something more than double a pouring of the Spirit of God came and then it began to flow. And it is flowing to your side now. Amen. But you know there's a price to pay. And there's something you need to do. That's why Elijah asked Elisha, ask what I will do for you. Uh, let me say something. You see, Elijah and Elisha, they had been together. But there was no familiarity. You know, sometimes familiarity is very, very dangerous for a servant of God. If Elisha had been familiar with Elijah, you know, while they were going from Gilgal to Bethel to Jericho to Jordan, uh, Elisha would have said, Elijah, are you keeping something away from me? I know you are going away today. They'll get into familiar conversation. But the man was dead serious. He was sober. I'm looking for something. If you're looking for something in your life, tonight is that night. And the Lord will give it to you in Jesus' name. But if it is just, you know, here we are for convention and, you know, we're familiar with one another and there is nothing that is going to say we don't know already, there's nothing he's going to give we don't have already, then we'll just remain empty-handed. God forbid you'll not be empty-handed. But, you know, Elijah said, Elisha, ask, what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee? And Elisha said, I pray thee, I'm pleading. I have a passion, I have a goal, I have a desire. Let a double portion of your spirit, of your anointing of the power, come upon me. Tonight, as we look at this double portion for sanctified believers, I divide to three parts. Number one, candidates for the double portion. I will be a candidate. Candidates for the double portion. Number two is the conditions of having the double portion. The condition of having the double portion. Number three, confirmation. Confirmation of the double portion. Number one, what's number one? Candidates, Candidates for the double portion. We're going to look at Elisha. And we're going to look at yourself. And then we're going to see the comparison between yourself and Elisha today. And as we see that comparison, then you'll be able to tell, am I a candidate? For this double portion, am I a candidate for double anointing and double power and double grace and double unction and double authority? Am I a candidate for the double blessing of the Lord tonight? Candidates for the double portion. I want to tell you, I want to show you seven things about this man. And it is, it's these seven things that actually make us to become the candidates for the double portion. Number one, he was saved. Saved. Number one, he was saved. We're looking at First Kings chapter 19. In First Kings chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 18. Yet have I left me 7,000 in Israel of all, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth that have not kissed him. The Lord said, he had Elisha, he also had 7,000 people. And these 7,000 people, their lives reflected the grace of God. 
Their lives reflected the godliness of the people of God. Their lives reflected the glory of the people of God. They have not, they have not bended the knee, neither have they kissed the bell. That is the idol of that land of that day. Number one, saved. If you are going to be a candidate for the double portion of the Spirit of God, then number one, you have to be saved. That means you have heard the gospel. You turn away from your sin. And you turn to the Lord. And you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he makes a change in your life. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. And then it says, uh, all things have passed away. And then all things have become new. You are saved. Number two, if you are going to, if you are a candidate for the double anointing. A double, a candidate for the double power. A candidate for this double blessing we're talking about. Number one, you are saved. Number two, you are separated. You see this Elisha. Don't you see what he did? He separated himself from the people of the land. No, he will not touch idolatry. He's a separated man. He's a saved man. That then Elijah can say, what will I do for you? You know, Gehazi was also following Elisha. But Elisha never asked Gehazi, what shall I do for you? Because Gehazi didn't have that mind. He didn't show that mark, that evidence of number one being saved, of number two being separated. If you're going to have, this thing we're talking about tonight, number one, you are saved. Number two, you are separated. In fact, we're told in James chapter 4. James chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 4. In James chapter 4 verse 4, it says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And the double anointing is not for the enemies of God. The double portion is not for the enemies of God. It's not for the people that love the world. And they love the things of the world. And they have not separated themselves from those things of the world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading to you from verse 14. Here is the word of God telling us, it's a separated life. You are saved, number one. Number two, you are separated. It tells us, be, be not unequally yoked together with some believers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Or, and what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with infidels? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. If you're going to be a candidate for this double anointing and double power and a double portion of the Spirit of God, it says, Come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord. Be ye separate, says the deeper life. No. What does it say? The says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. You know sometimes, whenever some people hear the word of God concerning worldliness and it says, come out, be ye separate. Oh, they say, this is deeper life. In our church, they don't talk about it like that. This is his church. The church of the living God. And the word of God says, come out and be ye separate, says the Lord. Then he says, I will receive you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. Number one is to be saved. Number two is to be separated. Number three, spotless. Spotless. If you look at this Elisha, and you follow him from place to place, from city to city, you'll find the spotless life. Because his life had been turned around by the Lord. And because that life had been turned around by the Lord, there's something you're going to notice in that man's life. He was spotless. No adultery. No fornication. And there, was, there wasn't any stain of sin upon his life. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it or the washing of water by the word, that he might present it unto himself a glorious church, not having spot. Not having spot. Stainless steel. Stainless character. Spotless life. 
That's what the Lord is waiting for. You know, there are people that think there's no shortcut. In this thing we're talking about, if we're going to have this double portion of the Spirit of God in our lives, number one, you must be saved. Number two, you are separated. Number three, you are spotless. Any stain of sin, any spot of sin, you say, no, no, I'm in for something else. You remember Joseph? Joseph knew he was destined to the throne. I'm destined for the throne. I said, I'm destined for the throne. You know, father was not there, mother was not there, and the, you know, the brothers were not there. And the wife of Potiphar said, come on now, a young man. If you don't do this, you'll be sick. That's what they say. If you don't know any woman, you know, as you're growing up, you need to release yourself. And then the, the young man said, no, I cannot do that. People like us who are destined to the throne, there are some things we never do. There are some places we never go. And there are some things we never touch. Because I know my destiny. And because I know where I'm destined to already have had enough trouble. My brother sold me in here because they want to cancel the dream. There are some things dreamers don't do. If you're a dreamer. If you're a dreamer. And you're dreaming for that high level. And you're dreaming for that great possession. And you're dreaming for royalty in your life. There are some things that dreamers never, never do. And because he knew I'm a dreamer, I'm up to something, I'm made for something, I'm created for something. I cannot do that. His life was spotless. The same thing you'll find with Elisha. Because he knew, I know that God wants me to take the place of Elijah. Because that's what God told Elijah. You go and anoint Elijah. Because he is the one that will be the prophet in your room. And anybody that is going to take the place of Elijah, a prophet of fire, what, what kind of man do you think he will be? He will be a spotless man. And if you will read the life story of Elijah, Elisha in 2 Kings, you are going to find that spotlessness, that stainlessness. And you're going to find that freedom, total freedom from the spot and the stain and the sin and the pollution. Of the land, spotlessness. Number four, it was a sanctified man. You see, the people who are going to have this double portion of the spirit, this great power of the spirit of God, saved, separated, spotless, sanctified. We're told in Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two, and I'm reading from verse twenty-one. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. And that's what the, the goal of, uh, of this man Elisha. I want to be a vessel unto honor. There is a work to do. Let's think about this now. Look up here. You have millions of people in the land of Israel. Their population was so great. And you have them in 12 tribes. And God says, I want one man. Out of millions of people, what do you think? If, for example, you're looking for a student and the president of the country says, we're going to give a special scholarship. And of the population of this country, United States of America, we want just one student of this age, age maybe 16 to 19. And we want one out of all the millions of students that are in school I, of this age to give them this scholarship. Of course, you know that such a student that is going to be selected for, one, for that one solitary position must be a special student. Am I right? And if God wanted to choose somebody that will replace Elijah, somebody that will stand in the place of Elisha and then be in the shoes of Elisha, do you think it will be a refrap? It'll be just, uh, you know, uh, just, just anybody on the street? Of course, no. That's the reason why if you have a goal, if you have a destiny, if you have an aspiration, if you have something you want the Lord to accomplish in your life, and you're saying, oh Lord, I want to be that man. I want to be that woman. I want you to select me. I want to be a chosen man, a selected man, a sent man. And I want days to take place in my life. You're not going to be like every deacon Harry. You're not going to, you know, just run to every place and do everything that everybody is doing. And number four, he was a sanctified man if any man will purge himself from all these things he'll be a vessel unto honor and then he'll be sanctified he'll be meet for the master's use and then he says he'll be prepared unto every good work 
That is the candidate for the double portion. Number five, he was a submissive man. A submissive man. Uh, you know, uh, there are many people today, I, I was spoke about that in the morning when I was talking about the crucifixion of self and the crucifixion of ego and that the eye is crossed out in your life. Look at this man. Now, before the man was chosen, the, before the man was selected, and the, before the man came uh, to be in partnership uh, following after Elijah, you know, he was the director of his own business. He actually had quite a lot of yokes. And then he, he was into agriculture. And in that agriculture, he was not a mediocre, he was not a poor man. He was a person leading in that field. And yet the hand of the Lord came upon him. But well, the point is now, as you look at Second Kings chapter 3, 2 Kings chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11, but Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord, that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king, one of, uh, one of, the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shepherd, which poured water on the hand of Elijah. Think about that. This man was the director. This man was the, uh, was the leader, the manager in his own business. And then the Lord called him. And he had no other work to do as just, just pour water in the hand of his mentor, in the hand of his master, in the hand of Elijah. Just pour water. He wanted to wash his hand. All Elisha would do is just pour water. Could you do that? Highly pleased man, educated man professional man, a director, a manager, and then you come to church, and you know who you are, you control quite a lot of people in your place of work. Then you became born again, and then you started coming to the church. And you, you know, before you can be a director, you'll be a communicator. You'll be, you'll be talking to your people there. You'll be a controller. You'll be directing. You have plans. And you're planning for thousands of lives. And then you come into the church. And uh, you say, here I am. And then sometimes you might even feel, church, are you not lucky to have me as a member of your church? Because where I'm coming from, I'm a recognized person. And then eventually when you come, you say, can I do anything in the church? Is there anything to be done? And then they say, Yes. We'll be looking for somebody that should every time, you know this uh, pastor, every time he comes like that, he shakes hands with a lot of people. And sometimes when you shake hands like that, you know, you have transference of bacteria. And so he needs to wash his hand before he goes to eat. And therefore, we're selecting your manager, director. Anytime he wants to eat like that, after finishing your meeting, shaking hands with many people, you'll pour water upon his hand. You say, what? What kind of church is this? You people don't recognize talent. You don't recognize ability. I'm not a man like that. Can't you find some of these illiterates who just came? They have no qualification, no talent to do that. Me, that's what I'm going to do. It's a test of who you are. Whether you are going to be a candidate for this double portion or not. Thank God I am a double I, I am a candidate. I said I am a candidate. I understand now. I didn't understand before. I just understand now. Because, you see, when I became a Christian, I became born again. I was, uh, you know, kind. In my class, I was special. I mean, in, in my class of mathematics. And then I became born again. And my, my pastor, he didn't understand. He was preaching the local language. And then I just became born again. As I became born again, he called me and he said, he called me by my first name. He said, thank God because you are here. Because, you know, the people in our school that went to our school, they drilled us in English. And we need, we need, we need all the spelling and the grammar and the tenses and everything. They taught us through and through. And my pastor said, please, you'll be coming to teach me English. I ran away. I said, not me. He is my pastor. He didn't finish primary six. But he had the spirit of God upon his life. And he said, I will teach him English. I said, no, 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 no way. There's no way I can sit with my pastor and be teaching him English language. I knew the English language, but I could not. To look at his face and say, sir, this is how you write this. This is how you compose this. I never could do that. And then eventually, uh, they, were, they made announcements. 
They said, we're looking for people. And the people were looking for, well, you know, all of you, you are here. Nobody wants to volunteer. And go and watch and go and, you know, look at the toilet and stay there so that they'll not mess up the place. I raised up, I was a graduate. I already did my mathematics. And then I had first class in mathematics. And when I go to school, when I teach in my school, all my students normally pass their exam. And they, they count me as special in my school. When I go to church and they wanted somebody that will be in the toilet, that will be taking care of the people. And they wipe the place and clean the place after they have messed the place up, I volunteered. And if I saw some people there that did have school certificate. They said, no, I can never do that. Thank God I did it. I said, thank God I did it. You know, it is that submissiveness. And anything I wanted to do, I knew the man, I, I knew my pastor, that he, did, he was only using the vernacular Bible. He couldn't use the English Bible. He did, didn't know what they call concordance, Bible dictionary, and any of those. But he knew salvation. He knew sanctification, and he knew the power of the, any any time he spoke. I glue my eyes on him like this. I will forget he didn't finish primary school, and then eventually, uh, you know, uh, whenever they asked any question, I raised up my hand, I answered the question, and they began to see that there's something in this young man. You see, if you are submissive like that. And you are not proud. And you are not thinking, I am this, I am this, I am that. You know, you'll be a candidate. Number five is to be submissive. I will be submissive. Number six, self-sacrificing. Self-sacrificing. You know, if you are going to have this double portion, and if you are really going to have this anointing upon your life, this power upon your life, the self-sacrifice. Self-sacrificing. First Kings, I'm reading from chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 21. First Kings chapter 19, verse 21, and returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. You see that sacrifice, he burnt the bridge behind him. He said, I'm going to follow Jesus. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Even if my friends forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me and the world behind me. No turning back. Still I will follow till then. That's the attitude of this man. You know, when you cross the road and you cross the bridge and then you know that there is no turning back. And then you bunch the bridge and you say, that is it, I am through. The past is past and it's gone. And here I am, I'm going to follow the Lord till the very end. That's what we're talking about, self-sacrificing, burning the bridge behind you. And then number seven now, he was steadfast. Not somebody that will be up today and down tomorrow. Not somebody will be running today and then he will be crawling tomorrow. He was steadfast just following the Lord and following the Lord and following his master all the way through. We're looking at 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass. When the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And Elijah said, Stay here. Stay here. You know, there are people that pick quarrels for the pastor. The pastor is discouraging me. The pastor is sending me away. The pastor doesn't want me to get involved. All right, take your church. Take your ministry. You don't have a goal. You don't have a dream. If you can abandon the work of God like that, if just a little test, that stay here, the Lord has called me, has sent me to Bethel, and he told me to stay. And I will stay. I have other things I'm doing. I'm not an indolent man. I have all this time on my hand. And I need to do something. And if Elijah is not forthcoming and you stay, stay there. I'm going to stay there. 
and I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to follow him, man. He's not even interested in man. He's not planning for me. He doesn't have any goal for me, any plan for me, and he doesn't have any progress for me, and he stays stay here, and then, and I know the Lord is taking him away, so he has not been thinking about, all right, Elijah, go your way, and I will stay where I am. You will be the loser. Elijah had already finished the ministry. Elijah could have said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. And now there is laid up for me a crown in heaven. Elijah has nothing to lose. If you pull back, if you stay back, if you say, okay, if that is the way they are talking, if that is the way they are preaching, if that's all the discouraging thing they want to say, that's all right, I will go after my life. Nobody will remember you after a few years. We are remembering Elisha today after thousands of years because he was steadfast. And when Elijah said, stay back, and he said, no, I will not stay back, I am following by the grace of God I am following I said I am following if I told you some things that happened to me I should have you know I should have left the Christian faith for a long time because you see when I became born again in my little local church before deeper life started I was the only graduate in in the in the church and you know everybody, if they stood up, if anybody's tried to speak English among some of those people, they'll, they'll batter that English. They'll butcher that English. And, and you, you know, sometimes I see you here, and you know, when somebody says something and then you laugh, not me. Whatever mistake they made, I just, I will look for the nudget inside what they were saying. I will not, I will not laugh, I will not make fun of them. And then our preacher, because you know our my you know my pastor at that time, that's another pastor now because they transferred that first pastor and they brought another pastor. He had some inferiority complex. And uh, he was a little bit afraid of me because, uh, you know, the, the way I was trained, I was, uh, apart from the English, I was trained in some other ways too. And because, and he knew that training, because, you know, when you see a man, you see his comportment, you see the way he carries himself, and you see the things he does, you see when he, uh, sometimes his quietness and embarrass you. And my, I knew the pastor, he was being embarrassed. And, uh, you know, he wanted to clamp down on me and, you know, crush me and all. He wanted to do something so that, I will not uh, feel big as if I was a graduate. And uh, so sometimes he was preaching. And then he was going to say something bad and naughty and something that, uh, you know, he, and he wanted me to know that he wanted me to stay in my place. I knew that's what he wanted to do. And he was preaching and preaching and preaching. I was, you know, opening the Bible as he was. Then he mentioned my name. I mean, he really, he mentioned my name, and he said some. you know, are you the only one that uh, knows book, that, you know, if you can write with the leg, and write with the hand, and write everywhere, and then he mentioned my name, because I was concentrating, I did, I, you know, I did, for, I, I stood up, since he mentioned my name, he said, sit down, <laughs> so I sat down, you know, I would have left the church, but no, I said, thank you, Lord, you know, I need a knock, and you give me a knock, thank you, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That, you know, God knows what I need. And everybody in that church, because I was the only one bearing that, bearing this name, it's a special name. Yeah. I said it's a special name. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I can talk to you another time on that name, but not today. <laughs> you know, and yeah, I was the only one bearing that name. And then he mentioned that name and said something derogatory and something bad. You know, if you are talking of education, you are talking of this and that. How many people are educated and they, they don't get to heaven? And then he, he thought I wasn't getting it and he wanted me to get it. So he mentioned my name. So then I said, so sit down, sit down, sit down there. And uh, don't go out, sit down there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, that, and, and you know, Elisha, Elisha did not, Elisha did not pull back. When, uh, you know, when Elijah said, stay here, and then the Lord has sent me over to the other side, he said, I'm still following. How many of you today, if the pastor insulted you, if the pastor said something you didn't appreciate, if the pastor didn't greet you the, the way you wanted him to greet you, if the pastor did not show you the favor you wanted him to show you, how many of you today will still remain and remain in the kingdom? I thank God I remained. You know, if I told you the things that happened to me when I was growing up as a Christian, and you know, this uh, uh, music, I spent all my time, I studied the theory. 
I studied the practical. And I, you know, I put my hand on that organ and then I began to play like this. You know, you'll be surprised at that time. I did it. I read my Bible. I read church history. I read quite a lot of things, preparing myself because I knew. I knew the vision I had. And then in our church at that time, they, they, they called us to the headquarters church. And, as, and I was very sure that no matter what a page they opened in those, in that music book, I just put my hand on that organ and begin to play like this. And, and the overseer that was testing us, he will know that I prepared myself. And, you know, they failed me already before I got there. You know, because they didn't, they didn't want to give the impression that, you know, you think you're a graduate, you think you can do something. It was in their mentality. And you know, and I, I didn't, I didn't recognize all that. I just, I just overlooked everything. And then, you know, somebody went for the test, and and I saw the way he did. And I was fumbling there, and he said, "All right, join the senior choir." Oh, I felt confident, and I felt that when I get there, if those people could mess up that music, and they choose them, when I get there, I'll be, you know, they'll know that I know this scene. And then another person went, and you know, the even a lady went there, and then you know, you have to sight read and read all the, you know, you have the music and then you have the wordings and without knowing that before you just look at the nose you tell you to sing it out and you know they fumbled I said this one didn't prepare and they said you are passed then I got there and they opened something very simple and I just ran my hands through and played then they put the sight uh, read, sight reading and I you know sight read everything and then uh, the pastor was surprised he said um, okay go and practice more and I was feeling high about all these people what have I done? Uh, am, I, am I, you know, unfortunate because I studied mathematics, because I'm a first a class of brain, or because, I, you know, I'm a graduate, am I unlucky? Do they want to fill their church with only illiterates? I didn't run away from the church. You see, it is that steadfastness to stay there and to stay there. Whatever is happening, that's why, by the grace of God, I am who I am today. Yeah. All the knocks didn't get me. All the oppression didn't crush me. And all the, everything that they did, I just stayed there. And I'm telling you tonight, if you are a candidate for the double portion, stay there. Amen. No matter what your pastor says, stay there. Amen. No matter what mistakes your pastor is making, stay there. They're discriminating against you, stay there. And the way they're preaching, they're knocking me on the pulpit, stay there. In a few years, by the grace of God, when those people are forgotten, we will remember you. So then, number one, the candidate, the candidates for the double portion. I come to point number two, is the condition of having the double portion. The condition of having the double portion. We come to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 9 and 10. And it came to pass when they were gone over. That Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if, that's the condition, nevertheless, if, that's the condition there, nevertheless, if thou see me, if, 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 if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. That little word there is a condition. Is the one that writes out, itemizes, and describes the condition of having the double portion. Why don't you follow that if through your Bible? Deuteronomy chapter 28. And you'll see that condition right there. The condition of the double portion. The condition of receiving this abundance of the power of the unction of the anointing of the Spirit of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hack him. You see that word if. That's a condition. There is a condition for the blessing the Lord will pour upon our lives. You will fulfill that condition. Yeah. If thou shalt hack him diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. 
All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou, if thou, if thou shalt hack him unto the voice of the Lord thy God. That's the condition there. You know, when you come to the house of God and the Lord is saying, I'm going to part my blessing and I'm going to enrich your life with the blessings of heaven. There is an Eve. The Eve was there in the time of Elisha and Elijah. And the Eve was there at the time of Moses and the children of Israel. And the Eve, that condition, goes all through the whole Bible. You know, it's not just, this is what I want. Are you fulfilling the condition? Are you telling the Lord, oh Lord, I just want your blessing. Whatever the cost, I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. Whatever others do. And thank God, thank God, because of paying the price. And it is that willingness to pay the price that you don't care what it costs. It's like, uh, you know, those who are athletes. And then they're running, they're running. The coach sometimes will insult them. The coach sometimes will almost oppress them. And the coach will say some bad, bad things about them. But because they have a goal. And they say, I want to win the medal. They say, I don't care, coach, what you say. I don't care what you do. And I don't care how you react to me. Yet I know I am destined for the top. And because of that determination that this is what they want. And they pay the price. That's why they become who they become. You'll become who you ought to become. Yeah. We're looking at verse 9. In verse 9 of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 9 it says, The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou that's the condition if thou shalt keep the commandments of the lord thy god and walk in his ways verse 13 and the lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if thou you see that many people they miss out that if i'll be the head are you doing what it takes to be the head I will not be the tail. Are you doing what it takes so that you will not be the tail? I will be above only. Are you fulfilling the condition to be above only? When you think about Elijah and about Elisha, they were above. They were the head. Think about all the other prophets in the Old Testament. You will not find a comparison of what Elijah did or what Elisha did. Because they fulfilled the condition. Because Elisha fulfilled the condition, you will find he became the head. And then we are told, if that thou hacking unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, I pray God will help you. This condition we are going to fulfill. We are told in Second, Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 14. Again, you'll find that if, that little word if is what describes for us, for you and for me, the condition that we are to fulfill so that the double portion will be upon our lives. In Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, if my people, it begins with the word if, if. That means then, if you're going to have this double blessing, double grace, double anointing, double power, double portion upon your life, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. And that's what the Lord is telling us, there's an if there's a condition. And that condition is the fulfillment of that condition. That actually makes us to become uh, people that are partakers of the double portion. In Job chapter 36, Job chapter 36, I'm reading from verse 10 to verse 12. You're looking for the word Ave. That's the condition that the Lord has given us so that we'll become partakers of the double portion of the blessings of the Lord. In Job chapter 36, I'm reading from verse 10. He opens also their ear to discipline. And command us that they return from iniquity if they obey. You see that? That's the condition. If we're going to have the overflowing blessings of God upon our lives, the condition for becoming partakers of the double portion in verse 11 if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their years, their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If. If the condition is there in verse in, in verse 12, but if they obey not, 
But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. Isaiah chapter 1. The condition. Isaiah chapter 1. In Isaiah chapter 1, we're reading from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient. That's the condition. The if is always there. It, has, it is attached to all the promises of God. And especially now, if you are coming in. And you want the double portion of the power. The anointing, the grace, the blessing of the Lord. If ye be willing and obedient. He shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse. If on the other hand you say, no, I don't want to pay the price. I don't want to be humble. I don't want to be a, you know, a follower. I don't want to be steadfast in the things of the Lord. I just want the power. The power doesn't come that way. It says, but if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken a John chapter 15. The condition. John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 7. John chapter 15 verse 7. If ye abide in me. And my words abide in you. That's the condition. If you abide. If you remain. If you continue. If ye abide in me. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will. And shall be done unto you. If you are asking for the double portion. Ye shall ask what ye will. And it shall be done unto you. On condition that you abide in the Lord. And the word of God abides in you. We are looking at First John chapter 3. In First John chapter 3. Reading from verse 19. First John chapter 3. From verse 19. Hereby we know. That we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if, that's it, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knoweth all things. Beloved, if, that's the condition, our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God and whatsoever we ask. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Whatsoever we ask, whatsoever we ask. Oh, thank God we can ask for whatsoever we want. I said we can ask for whatsoever we want. Amen. And if you are obedient to the word of God, and you will stay and stand steadfastly in that watch of the Lord, then whatsoever we ask of him, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasant, that are pleasant, pleasing in his sight. Number one, what's number one? Tell me out together. And then number two. I come to number three. What's number three? Confirmation of the double portion. You know, when you have it, you'll know you have it. When you have it, all the people will know you have it. And Elisha, when Elisha had it, there was a confirmation. I pray that from tonight, there will be a confirmation in your life. Amen. And let's come back to Second Kings chapter 2. Confirmation of the double portion. In, in Second Kings chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. And it came to pass, as the steel went on, and told that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. And horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up in it by well wind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. You know the condition? If thou see me, it shall be so. And Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Why did he do that? His clothes demonstrated the past, the weakness, the lack of power, the powerlessness. And he took that emblem or that mark or that symbol of powerlessness. He tore it and threw it away. And then in verse 13, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He went back and then he stood by that river because he knew what Elijah had done. And now the power had come upon Elijah. And because the power had come upon Elijah, you tell me, if you have the same power with Elijah, you'll do what Elijah has done. And if you have a double portion of the power of God upon Elijah, you are going to do double. I said you are going to do double. 
But I see if you want to get something done, if you want your life to amount to something, then you are going to say, this is the mantle. The power has come. Praise the Lord. I saw him. Praise the Lord. I fulfilled the condition. And because I fulfilled the condition, I know there's going to be the manifestation of that power. And then we're told in verse 14, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And went and when he also at smitching the waters, when he also, that means Elijah did it, he also did it. Elijah accomplished it, he also accomplished it. When he also at smitching the waters, they parted here and thither, and Elisha went over. Those who have the double portion, they always pass over. There's no river that can separate you between you and your goal. You'll pass over. There is no mountain that can hinder you. When you have this double portion, this double anointing, you will pass over in Jesus' name. No demon. No Satan. No man, no woman will be able to stand before you when you have this double anointing. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. That's a confirmation. A confirmation of the double portion. Now let me show you now more of that confirmation. Chapter 2 verse 19. In chapter 2 verse 19, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a, cruise, a, a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters, and there shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which is paid. The waters that was kill, killing the people, because there was poison in, in that, that water. And then the Lord gave him the wisdom, exactly what to do. And when he did that, there was no more harm. That's the confirmation of the anointing. Chapter 4, verse 16. In chapter 4 of uh, Second Kings, I'm reading from verse 16. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. The proclamation he made, this woman was barren. And then he said, this woman has done so much for us. What can we do for this woman? And the servant Gehazi said, she doesn't have any child. Call her for me. And you'll see in this story, no familiarity between the woman and the man. If you're a man of God, there's not going to be any undue familiarity between you and the women. You know, she stood by the door. And then Elisha said, woman, hear the word of the Lord. By this time, according to the time of life, by this next, uh, next time, this, uh, this, uh, uh, next year, this time, you're going to have your own baby. And the woman did not even believe. Said, do not deceive your handmaid. But we are told, according to the word of Elisha, it came to pass. And it's coming to pass. Amen. I said it's coming to pass. Amen. I told you that, you know, I just uh, came from uh, Britain, that's uh, from London. Last year I was there. And while I was there, you know, I didn't even have much time with the people. All that happened is that, you know, when I finish my preaching, then as I'm going, uh, sometimes uh, they will wave hands at me. And then sometimes they say, Pastor, remember me. Then uh, sometimes, you know, I say, what's the problem? And then this particular woman said, I've been married for, you know, about 12 years or more than that. And I, no child. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you'll carry your own miracle baby. And that was all. And this uh, year now that I went there, just uh, that happened last year. And then this year she came with that baby and said, praise the Lord, look at me. Now I'm a mother of babies. And then the, the other one that came, uh, the, the man is in the 50s. And the woman is already beyond 46 years of age. And when you know women have gone beyond that uh, you know, level, beyond 40, 46 now. And last year I was uh, there. And I said, uh, you know, this uh, couple they saw me and we prayed. 
again. Thank God that miracle baby is now there. You know, that's the confirmation. When you have the double anointing that we're talking about, that confirmation will come. Every word you pronounce of the miracles upon the people, it will be so in Jesus' name. And you know, it's not just on, it's not just on, uh, you know, childbearing or sickness or whatever. And this uh, woman ran to me, they just say about two weeks ago now, three weeks now, you know, time, time, uh, runs said so fast. And uh, her problem is, this may surprise you, you say, uh, is that a problem? Are you ready to hear? Yes. Or should I just go on? I'd like to hear my stories. Yes, you know, I don't come off on any time I come out to tell you a lot of stories. How many of you want to hear this story? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, she, uh, she got a particular work. And in that work, they didn't check on what they should check up. And what they should have checked up is whether she had driving license or not. Because she was to be placing drivers here, drivers here, drivers here. And somebody like that in control of many other drivers in that establishment is a high position that she got. But she herself she did not have driving license. And, uh, and she was afraid. She was saying, one day these people are going to ask me. They, they just assumed. When they interviewed her, they interviewed her on this and this and this and that. And they just felt that for her to apply for that job, she must have got a driving license. Because she knew she was going to control drivers. Having good driving license of grade A, grade B and grade C. And she had nothing. And then secretly she was going for the driving test. And she went seven times. And failed. And then she was afraid that her work, her job was stretching, that she wasn't going to get any, you know, any, any job again. Because they would de detect that now you have been fooling us all this time, you need to have driving license, and you are controlling other people. And so she came to me. I think maybe that was either Monday or Tuesday. She was going to go for the test on Wednesday. And then she said, Pastor, my job is on the line. I said, why? said, because I don't have driving license. And I didn't understand. I said, driving license, what has that got to do with your job? Then she explained and said, Pastor, I just need this driving uh, license. I've gone seven times. And because of that, I'm now nervous. Because I've failed so many times, I don't really have the confidence. Therefore, it's like my job is going. I said, let us pray. I said, in the name of Jesus, she's going for the driving test uh, tomorrow or next tomorrow. Give her the driving license in Jesus' name. Then I said, amen. And then she looked up and said, you know, this is a serious problem, Pastor. Don't be in a hurry. Pray for me, please. And so I said, go your way. Everything is all right. And I'm telling you tonight, everything is all right. Yeah. You're all right. Yeah. Your family is all right. Yeah. Driving license is all right. Yeah. And then the following day, she went to her amazement. After the, you know, the, uh, the person testing, I just said, turn here, turn here. Then she turned. And then park here, she parked. And then the fellow came out of the car and said, you have your license. She said, what? And then she ran to the church. And, uh, you know, I saw she was coming for counseling again, saying, hey, Pastor, I need another prayer. She said, oh, she was so smart, so brightened up. And she said, Pastor, I made it. You will make it. I said, you will make it. She got it. You know, that's how simple it is. When we speak the word, whether it's for a child, for a license, for a certificate, you are going to have it in Jesus' name. And so we have a confirmation. The confirmation of the double portion. Let's look at chapter 5. Chapter 5 of 2 Kings. I'm reading from verse 8. And it, came, and, and it was so. When Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven 
seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come unto, out to me, and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper, and not have a banner and farpa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in, in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? And he went down. And dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, according to the saying of the man of God, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he was clean. You see that kind of miracle, that's what God does for a man that has the double anointing, the double portion. Second Kings chapter 13. In Second Kings chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 20 and verse 21. Second Kings 13 verse 20 and verse 21. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the hands of the Moabites, the bands of the Moabites invaded the land. At the coming in of the year, and it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, there despite a bunch of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. Are you following? Yeah. A man died, and the people were going to bury this dead man. But then they saw some robbers, some bands of people coming. They became afraid. And because they became afraid, they couldn't go to drop the man that was dead in the sepulchre in the grave. They had dropped for the man. And the grave of Elisha was open. And then they said, he dropped the man in the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. That man had double anointing. He had double power. There was a confirmation. You know, in your life, there will be a confirmation. I said there will be a confirmation. Amen. You know how God, how God works? You know, sometimes uh, in our church in Lagos, they will say, this sister, she was so sick. All through the night, they didn't sleep. And uh, so, because, you know, she woke up in there, she said, my husband, I'm dying. Look at me. Look at my condition. And that was Saturday night. Then on Sunday, uh, the husband said, let's go to church. And she said, uh -uh, you are telling me to go to church? You know my condition now? The way I am now, between us and, uh, you know, between us and heaven, how can I go to church? And the husband pleaded and said, I would like to go to church. I don't want to leave you alone by yourself here. Please say, uh, let's go. And then she dressed up and she came. But she was so tired and so weak and so sick. And uh, so while the prayer was going on, we came, we had the scripture. And I sat uh, over here uh, the way I normally do. And then I was, you know, looking at the people. And uh, then we faced the scripture. We had question and answer. And after the question and answer, the brother was leading the, who was the leader, the prayer started leading the prayer. And said, everybody rise up. And then the people stood up. And then I left where I was standing just to walk around and see how the people are doing. And I saw this sister and she was very sick, but I didn't know. And she was, you know, bending her head on the uh, front uh, seat. And I felt everybody standing up. Why is this uh, sister just sitting down like this when they said, everybody stand up. And uh, so I tapped her on the shoulder. When I tapped down the shoulder, you know, she testified later. She said, you know, this usher. She, she thought, uh, you know, it was an usher. It's not an usher, it's your pastor. And then she said, these ushers, they don't understand the condition in which I am. Why are they doing like this? And then, because she didn't stand up, I tapped her again. And then she got up and, and said, ah, pastor. And she was healed immediately. Just that, just that. And I wasn't praying. I was just going around to look at the people. Those who are standing up, those who are sitting. And I just did like this. And then she looked up and saw me and totally, totally, completely healed. I'm telling you, there's a double power. There's a double anointing and there's a double portion. I'm passing it on to you. Yeah.
because there's a transference of spirit and power tonight is coming your way tonight is coming your way we're through with no taking oh now we're going to take the power no more taking note we're going to take the power this is your night this is your night it's going to be transferred unto you it is coming right now i said it's coming right now you will stand up and then you will tell the lord tonight is my night my night of double portion my night of double anointing my night of double blessing my night of double unction my night of double authority it's your night it's your night it's your night my brother my sister you can have it tonight number one the candidate number two the condition number three the confirmation open your mouth and talk to the lord It is coming tonight. It is coming tonight. It is coming tonight. It's a night of double portion. Are you saved? To be a candidate, you must be saved. Are you separated from the world? That's how to be a candidate. Are you spotless? Are you spotless? Stainless? Or you are learning some spot and some sin and some stain in your life? Sanctified? Sanctified heart? Sanctified soul? Sanctified spirit? Sanctified life? Sanctified tongue? Sanctified behavior? sanctified submissive 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 no stubbornness no stony heart no self will submissive self sacrificing steadfast you come to the Lord and say yes Lord sanctify me purify me tonight purge me tonight make me a candidate of this double portion of your spirit if ye be willing and obedient he shall eat the good of the land willing willing Willing, willing and obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. Ask and shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. No can it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If ye then been evil not to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Shall your father will in heaven give good things and give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Let there be a confirmation in your heart in your life tonight. Confirmation, confirmation, confirmation. The power of the Spirit. The anointing of the Spirit. The unction of the Spirit. The anointing that breaks the yoke. Ask him face. Nothing wavering. Ask him face. Nothing wavering. Ask. Ask. Ask him faith. Believe the Lord tonight. Believe the Lord tonight. Make sure you are a candidate for this double portion. Let the Lord touch your life. Let the Lord turn your life around. Let the Lord transform you. 
within and without change of life change of heart change of attitude change of behavior let the blood of jesus wash you whiter than snow get ready get ready get ready for the double portion of the spirit of god upon the sanctified It's coming upon you today. It's coming upon your life today. It's coming. It is coming. Double portion. Double portion. Double portion. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. be a candidate fulfill the condition then there will be a confirmation it's yours it's available it's yours it's available. Double portion of power. Double portion of blessing. Double portion of the spirit. Double portion of the anointing. Double portion of faith double portion double portion double portion it's coming it's coming receive by faith accept it it's yours You can receive yours tonight. You can receive the double blessing tonight. You can receive the double power tonight. You can receive the double anointing tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, amen. Another amen. amen. Tonight, a double portion is coming upon your life. Amen. Double portion of grace. Amen. Double portion of faith. Amen. Double portion of blessing. Amen. Double portion of anointing. 
double portion of authority. Double portion of power. If you believe it's just tonight, put up your hands and receive from the Lord tonight whatever miracle you need. Healing, deliverance, power, authority, unction, anointing, whatever. Every yoke to be broken in your life. Just raise up your hand and it is there tonight. I said it is there tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus. This is the night of a double portion. And I bring everyone before you, Lord, tonight. And I pray a double portion of their desires. You grant unto them in Jesus' name. All the failures of the past. All the defeats of the past. All the sorrow and suffering of the past. Tonight we cancel it by this double anointing in Jesus name. All the curse upon any life here. Yoke upon any life here. All the hindrances in any life here. Oh Lord tonight we take it away in Jesus name. This is going to be a special night. A night never to be forgotten. A night when there's going to be a wall of separation between the past and the present experience. Because all past failure is gone. All past defeat is gone. All the past yoke is broken. All the past causes are destroyed. Past impossibilities are removed. Tonight, oh Lord, I pray that you bring all your people, brothers and sisters, you bring them onto a new level in Jesus' name. All those enemies of progress have been running after them. I command you, enemies of progress, get away from the people of God in Jesus' name. From tonight, victory upon your life. From tonight, freedom upon your life. From tonight, power in your life. From tonight, possibilities in your life. From tonight, your word will be a word that will make all your mountains to vanish away. Lord, I pray for those who need healing, you pass on to them now a double portion of that healing in Jesus' name. You heal them, soul and spirit and body. You heal their family. You heal their, their business. And you heal everything that needs to be healed in their lives in Jesus' name. For those who need deliverance, O oh Lord, a double portion of that deliverance. I command upon them right now. All the yoke, all the affliction, all the oppression, all the moving objects from the head to the toe. I command total deliverance. Complete deliverance. Abundant deliverance. Double deliverance upon your life in Jesus' name. All the harassing voices you have been hearing in your ear. Tormenting voices you have been hearing in your ear. That want to turn you to another individual. I command all those voices right now. Get out in Jesus' name. And all those bad dreams. All those nightmares. All the things attacking you in the dream. I take authority over everything right now. And I pray, oh Lord, deliver everyone once and for all in Jesus' name. Lord, those who want double spirituality. Pardon and purity. Punching and purity. In their soul, in their heart. In their spirit, in their mind. In their family, in their lifestyle. Lord, that purging, that purifying, give unto them now in Jesus' name. And now for the candidates of double power. Double power. Double power. Double power. Lord, I send your power into every life right now in Jesus' name. The power that David had, that he killed the lion and the bear, receive it now in Jesus' name. The power that shed up Meshach and Abednego had, and the fire of Nebuchadnezzar could not burn them, that fire, that double portion of the power, come upon you right now in Jesus' name. The power that Joshua had, that he went with the old team, the army, around the walls of Jericho, just marching, just walking, and with one shout of praise the Lord, all the walls came down. A double power like that is coming upon your life. And Lord, I pray this power will be upon these Joshua's of today. 
And Lord, I pray, as they march around, all Jericho walls around them, they will fall down in Jesus' name. The kind of power that Peter had while he was walking on the street. A shadow came upon the people that were sick and they became healed. Oh Lord, I'm praying that healing power, that healing virtue, in a double fold anointing, will come upon our ministers, will come upon our members, will come upon your people in Jesus' name. Amen. The power that makes us to run and not to faint, Amen. to walk and not to be weary, Amen. not to get tired. That nothing discourages us. Nothing threatens us. Nothing makes us get back to say we cannot. Oh Lord, all they cannot, cannot, cannot. We take it away from the life of everyone tonight. In Jesus name. Double portion has come upon your life. Double anointing has come upon your life. Double blessing has come upon your life. Double glory has come upon your life. Double honor has come upon your life. From today, you are more than a conqueror. From today, you are more than a conqueror. Everywhere you go, enemies will bow before you. Everywhere you go, there will be success and victory. Because from today now, because of this double anointing, double power, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. You will not be tired again. You will not be weary again. You will not be discouraged again. You will not be fearful again. Go in the strength of the Lord from tonight, in Jesus' name. And this double portion will become triple, will become quadruple, will be increasing and increasing and increasing your life in Jesus' name. From now on, from now on, you'll be more than a conqueror. In every situation of life, you will conquer. From this con convention, you will go with double portion. The people that see you will see double power. Your family will see double blessing. And from today, while all the failures and defeats have gone, every good thing in your life will become double. Confirm it to everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, I got something tonight. I got something tonight. I said I got something tonight. I'm a carry and possessor of double portion. Double portion upon your life. Amen.